Impact here on uh, it is Wednesday, August the 13th. We've got several things to break down in this episode of Tropical Weather Impact, including what we're going to be tracking maybe in the Gulf over the next couple of days. The chances of that developing don't appear very likely right now. And also we're going to be talking about what's going on with Tropical Storm Air and that storm is well, eventually expected to organize, although it has been struggling quite a bit. And so we're talking about that new spot to watch in the Gulf. Aaron's turn out to see how likely is it. We are growing more confident that that will happen, but we got to watch the islands. We're talking Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, maybe as far uh, as the Turks and Caicos really keeping an eye on Aaron. So that's where Aaron is as of our 10 a.m. update this morning. But this is the new spot the National Hurricane Center is going to be watching. And since this is closer to home, I wanted to start with the latest on this feature. Now, the good news is off the top here, they're not giving this a likely chance of development. They're only plugging it in at a 20% chance of development. By Thursday, it's here. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that moisture is moving inland there in Texas. It is worth watching though. Sometimes what's interesting about this part of the Gulf is that its interaction with land, a system interaction with land can actually help it tighten up. And so sometimes models really struggle with this. I think that's why the National Hurricane Center is going to highlight it and keep an eye on it because they know that this is a uh, an infamous spot for quick spin up systems here. And so we'll be watching that mainly into the end of this weekend, the weekend. Again, the good news is we're not seeing a whole lot of model support for anything substantial. I think at the end of the day, we're tra talking mostly about tropical moisture. You can see there by tomorrow that moisture over the Gulf. Here it is Thursday into Friday, kind of fluctuating up and down here with the uh, the showers and storms and nothing's able to really maintain itself and so you don't get any formation. One thing's for sure though, there's a lot of tropical moisture with this tropical wave and so you can see as we put this in motion that moisture is over the Yucatan today. Thursday it's in the Gulf. This is when we we'll be watching for maybe some gradual development, but really I think the moisture is just fueling extra showers on the Texas coast starting mainly Friday into Saturday and Sunday. Now for New Orleans and Mississippi and along the northern Gulf here, we do have some tropical showers and storms, but that plume of moisture likely stays towards Texas and fuels some of their heavier showers. But that's looking like a minimal threat the way it looks right now. Let's talk about Tropical Storm Air, and this is the 10 a.m. Central 11 a.m. update from the National Hurricane Center. We have not seen any changes in the intensity of this. The only thing that's been changing with it is that it is slowing down. What that will allow this system to do is actually begin to organize. So there's been a couple things working against it being able to organize out here in the Atlantic. It's been moving too fast. It's been in cooler water temperatures and it's had dry, stable air in the mid levels. All three of those work against the tropical system organizing. And so, so far we're maintaining that 45 mile per hour intensity. But when you look at it on satellite, you can see it's got the well-defined structure of a tropical storm. You've got circulation. You finally have some showers and storms firing near the southern side. And so there is some wind shear on the northern side. But once those showers and storms start to wrap around that circulation and it moves into the warmer waters, it will be likely intensifying. This will probably be a hurricane by Friday. Now we've bumped back the timing some. Now yesterday we had it as a hurricane. Tomorrow we're thinking it's going to be a little bit more gradual of a process probably. Now it's a small system, so they can fluctuate up and down fairly quickly, but the general trend will be for a strengthening hurricane approaching the islands. Now the current thinking still stands that the most likely scenario is the core of this developing hurricane and strengthening hurricane is just north of the islands. There's Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Now remember, a cone exists for a reason. Uh, two thirds of the time, the storm will stay in the cone. One third of the time, though, storms go outside of the cone. So that's why we got to watch this really closely for areas like Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. This could be a strengthening hurricane passing by. There we are Saturday morning. There we are Sunday morning. There we are Monday morning. Now you can also see the trend. We go from traveling west to traveling northwest tomorrow. Northwest travel will continue through the weekend, but my Monday we start to see a slow turn to the north. And so that's the turn we are still expecting. Our tropical models, they're not letting us down right now. They haven't done anything too wild. They are still maintaining. You can see there they're at the center of the cone, so they're agreeing with that. They're this weekend here. Here's that turn on Monday as it starts to shift to uh, at least out to sea. Now that right there means Bermuda is going to have to watch this closer, but we are starting to feel pretty good here along the East Coast. We are still not seeing a Gulf system and the East Coast system becomes more and more unlikely 
with the trends that we have been monitoring. Why the turn? Well, our ridge is going to break down. That's a given at this point. Everything seems to be working for this thing to turn out to see. Now the ridge right now, it's strong and it's in charge. It's blocking this thing from coming to the north. And as the storm gets stronger, the ridge is getting weaker eventually. Here we are Saturday. You can see the ridge backing out over the US. That means this is an opening. That's an escape path. And that's why the system is going to start to feel the weakness. Systems naturally want to feel the weakness in the atmosphere and wants to turn to the north. Well, if there's not a ridge ahead of it, it's going to do that. And so that's why it's going to start to gradually turn. Now, this isn't going to be a quick turn where it pulls north and is out to sea quickly because the upper level winds near this ridge are very, very weak. That's a natural feature of an upper level ridge is that the winds don't move very quickly. And so the storm is going to start to pull itself out into that weakness. Now, once it gets north of Bermuda, it does start to feel the upper level winds, which are stronger up north near the jet stream, that thing gets pulled out. And so that's a steering pattern for tropical storm or soon to be Hurricane Aaron. That's a steering pattern that can help protect the United States. And so the ridge backs away far enough. You get an extremely weak area of ridging here, and that thing's going to have the opportunity to stay away from the United States. Now, with that being said, we always watch these things until they make the turn. Uh, this is going to be a slow moving turn. It's hard to predict the exact timing it'll turn, the exact motion, but the general thinking is the turn will happen. You don't believe me? Well, let's look at 81 different scenarios. So what you're looking at here literally looks like spaghetti, right? Well, in the red, which are under the white lines here, that's the American model run 31 different scenarios. So we take the GFS model and then we plug in all these different variables. We run it 31 times. The European model, even better. We run it 51 different times. So that's 82 different scenarios total. And every single one of those scenarios, that's great. They're all out to sea. There's been a couple that are a little bit closer to the US, but even those have been fading. Yesterday, there was one model out of 82 that had it in Florida. There are zero models that had it on the East Coast, and all the models have it out to sea. Now, there are a couple that are a little too close. This would send large swells and crashing waves to the outer banks and things like that. But the further east you go here, the less and less impact, but then you're watching Bermuda. So Bermuda is really going to be the hot spot here to watch. Whether it's a direct landfall or not, you still have an approaching, maybe growing in size hurricane. Our GFS and American models, just the single model runs show this, not the different ensembles that we have. They show it just north of the islands. There's Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands by Saturday night. And then slowing down, turning north. Here we go, out to sea. And so we love that. We don't like it for Bermuda, but it's looking better for the East Coast and still sitting okay here in the Gulf waters. Now, why is this thing going to blow up? Probably well, it's starting to improve its structure one and two here in the next 24 hours. It's moving over much warmer water temperatures. The threshold for a tropical system is usually around 80 degrees or so, give or take, and we will be well into the 80s once it moves out towards the islands. We're talking the mid 80s at that, so that can support it. So what are the chances right now with the current forecast that the the um, the Virgin Islands, the Leeward Islands and Puerto Rico see strong winds. Well, the current thinking is that the structure of Aaron is probably going to be fairly small still as it passes by. And if it does stay north of the islands, there's almost a 100% chance of tropical storm force winds several, several miles. I can actually draw an arrow on here for you. A, um, a measurement and you can see there you're talking the core of this storm could be 150 to 200 miles off the islands there. Now there's a low chance 10, 20, 30% chance right now of tropical storm force winds. That's 39 miles per hour or greater for the islands. So that's doable. We'll make sure it doesn't try to get close. Keep in mind we could see fluctuations if that hurricane gets closer to the islands, then we have to increase the wind threat here. Now it's starting out. It's a small storm. This thing is tiny. That means it can fluctuate intensity a little bit faster too, but watch what happens. Here we are Sunday. Let me stop it for you. You can see there we are Saturday morning into Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. You've got the core of the winds north of the islands with the current thinking, and then it starts to turn. The storm is growing in intensity. It's also growing in size. That would be bad for Bermuda. Who knows if it actually plays out that way? That's too far out to say for sure, but that's a bigger hurricane by the time we get out to next Wednesday. What this would do is send large swells to the east coast. So that would probably be our primary risk at the end of the day with all of this. So that's where we stand. The 10 a.m. update here on your Wednesday, August 13th with Tropical Storm Aaron and that new feature they're watching off 
the uh, Caribbean moving towards the Western Gulf. I think the threat with that one's going to be on the low side. And so far in the U.S., the threat from Aaron is looking very, very low at this point, especially for the East Coast, the Gulf. I'm not really worried about this at all where we stand. We'll be right back here every single day with your tropical weather impacts. Hopefully on WWL Plus you're watching us or YouTube, Facebook, all of our other streaming services. We'll be here tracking the rest for you the rest of the week. Thanks for joining me. Thank you.